so much for tuning back in to LA show. I really do appreciate you guys for tuning back in with me. Of course, today we have Cisco back again, and we are going to discuss someone who, if you've been into research about certain topics, then you should know of her and her story. And today is her 10 year anniversary um, being away from this earth. And we give the utmost respect to this woman because what happened to her should not have happened to her under no circumstance. Um, today we're gonna talk about Matrice Richardson. So I am on bringmytreesjustice.org and I'm gonna read an article and this page is actually ran by her father, Michael Richardson. And um, you know, huge shout out to him because of course he put all of this together for his daughter and in a rough state of mind, he was still able to do this, to push for justice for his child. So, you know, we just got to keep keep an eye on things with this case. What the sheriffs did to my daughter is wrong and could happen to you or someone you know and love, Michael Richardson. My Trice Richardson disappeared from the Malibu Lost Hills Sheriff's Department on September 17th of 2009 after being released at 12.38 a.m. for being arrested and booked on two citable offenses, attempting to defraud an innkeeper in Malibu and possession of less than an ounce of marijuana. That night, a manager from Joffrey stated that prior to the time of Matrice entering the restaurant, she was found in one of the staff's vehicles located in Joffrey's parking lot, going through his CD collection. When Matrice was questioned about being in the vehicle, she began speaking gibberish. After the staff witnessed Matrice's bizarre behavior in Joffrey's parking lot, she was then allowed to enter the restaurant to order a meal and an al alcoholic beverage, totaling to $89, where again, witnesses inside described Matrice's behavior as strange. She allegedly told a few people she was from Mars and was here to avenge Michael Jackson's death. Now, Cisco, we got some questions about a couple statements in in that in those two paragraphs first of mm -hmm. all <laughs> yeah i mean first of all <clears throat> i never knew of a uh, jail releasing somebody in the middle of the night yeah I've heard of that correct correct and not well, only that <laughs> well in the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, and plus she's a young, defenseless woman. Absolutely. And on top of that, as we go through this story a little bit deeper, her mother, Latrice, Latrice Sutton, Latice, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Latice Sutton, actually was in contact with this jail, with, with this facility the Lost Hills Sheriff's Department. And she was elaborating to them that she would come pick her daughter up if they were going to release her that night. But yes. they told her or gave her the runaround, basically stating that they would release her in the morning. <clears throat> so we'll get to that. But that's very interesting. Absolutely. Also, the fact that she was arrested and booked for two citable offenses um, that's right. something that I never really thought about either. Yeah, something that they could have just gave her a ticket for. Correct. So then we also have the parking lot situation in Joffrey's. When she got there, um, she was getting valet for her car, and she ended up getting out of her car and actually getting into an employee's car and was going through his CD collection. Right. So at this point, 
Joffrey's has to be somewhat liable for the fact that they have a woman in their parking lot and she she doesn't seem stable. Correct? Absolutely. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, I find it strange in a restaurant like uh, Goffrey's. I mean, and hopefully, you know, L.A., you can put some pictures up there to show them what this kind of what kind of place this is. So mm-hmm. you imagine a, a, a black girl in Malibu, which a black, a black girl from L.A. And she's in the parking lot and she's rummaging through an employee of Goffrey's CD collection in their car and then is allowed into the establishment and allowed to purchase an alcoholic drink. Now, if once the person is seen speaking gibberish, how are they fit to come inside the establishment? And then how do you allow them to drink alcohol? So I say that absolutely they have some liability in her mental state because they supplied her with alcohol. Okay. I mean, that's just, that's reasonable to say. So Joffrey's personnel then called 911 explaining that there was a black woman there acting like she was on drugs and refusing to pay her bill. Listen to the actual 911 call. Three male officers from Malibu Lost Hills Sheriff's Department responded to the call at Joffrey's where at least nine witnesses informed officers of Matrice's behavior. Matrice then no. phoned her. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say if we. Uh, I'm not disputing what the father has written here, if he actually wrote this, but it's on his website. But that clinical psychologist states that there was more a large police presence correct for correct. for these say. citable actions correct that's the only thing i wanted to say you were absolutely right so what we mean is that this establishment fueled this woman's behavior and then called 911 explained that there was a black woman there acting erratically and then a swarm of police officers came Right. Now it can be debated. The father right. was this actually. This is according to the yeah. The father was actually, um, you know, I won't say he wasn't present, but he wasn't around most of the information that was g- being given to the mother, and that clinical psychologist. Could I say that? You know, because it was like, it was a lot of tension going on. In the situation, of course. So, um, if it was three male officers, okay. But if it were a lot more, I could, I could almost imagine that Matrice may have been petrified. So, Matrice then phoned her great grandmother using Joffrey's phone, who was willing to pay the bill over the phone, but Joffrey's manager declined the payment. Since Joffrey's manager refused to accept payment over the phone, Matrice's car was impounded along with her purse and her cell phone as she was taken into custody at approximately 9 p.m. by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Malibu Lost Hills Department. So, Matrice's grandmother is a very elderly woman. Um... She got a phone call in the middle of the night. uh, And she probably really didn't understand what was going on or the scope of what was happening. I'm pretty sure Matrice was able to articulate that there may have been police involved. But as far as her being able to pay the bill, it, it just couldn't happen. At some point, from what I understood from the clinical psychologist, and I'll get her name in a moment. Um, She stated that she stated that they switched up their payment methods due to losing money. Yeah, they they had recently changed the rule where they don't accept credit cards over the phone. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
But another strange thing is why would the police impound Mitrice's car? There's no That's need. That's another weird thing. Yeah, that there's no need to impound her car. Along because you with haven't her, proven. Along, and that was along with her person's cell phone. So you impound the car with her person's cell phone, rendering her additionally helpless because they're going to release her at 12.38 a.m. without Correct. her purse, without, without her cell phone. And the strange thing is, if I'm not mistaken, she had money in the bank. So had she had, she's probably disoriented, but had she had access to her purse, somebody probably could have coached her into paying for her food and drink. Mm-hmm. Now, I do remember the clinical psychologist's name being Rhonda. I just can't think of her last name. I think it's Milton. Okay. So, Matrice's mother phoned the Malibu Lost Hills Sheriff's Department several times out of concern for Matrice, stating that this was uncharacteristic behavior for her and that she was quite fearful. Matrice's mother did not want Matrice released in the dark in an unfamiliar place. She was reassured by the sheriffs that Matrice would phone her when she arrived at the station. Matrice was still en route to the sheriff's office at, the, at that point. That phone call never came, and, my, and a mother's biggest fears were realized as her daughter was released at around 12.38 a.m. in the dark in an unfamiliar area without her ID, purse, phone, or car. So then we have another facility, another business, another corporation come through, take my trees to an area. They booked her and then let her go. Right. From what I understand. Okay. From around nine after the whole outburst in the parking lot, after her sitting down, getting a drink, I don't know what time specifically the police were, was called. But she had about maybe, you know, we're talking about around 1030. She might have been taken from the restaurant to the police station. We're talking about maybe in, in less than an hour and a half that she was at right. the actual police station. And the, the real sad thing is that if you listen to that 911 call uh, with with the mother, she even says, I don't want, you know, you to release my daughter and then I hear, you know, something on the news that, you know, or she's, you know, end up, ends up dead or something like that. And that's exactly All what right. happened. Now that was that, man. That's heavy right there. That's heavy. For you, I for you to have the premonition and you, you know, that tells you that the mother knew that this is not even, let's say, even if the report is correct, still don't release my daughter like that. You know, it's not going to be good if you release my daughter in the middle of and nowhere. If you type her name into YouTube. I saw a video of somebody actually driving the route that it would have took her to get to uh, somebody's house in Malibu, which we'll talk about a little bit more in depth. So let me finish this article. Uh, th that was a long, long car ride that person took, may I add. Several months later, after an extensive research and an investigation by the LAPD, it was confirmed by LAPD's professional mental health consultants, trained mental health physicians, that Mitrice was definitely experiencing some type of mental health challenges, possibly even a mental breakdown that could have been brought on by a multitude of reasons, dealing with everyday life events and or stresses. This was already discovered by nine non-professionals who were dining that night at Joffrey's just from a standpoint of common sense. Sheriffs refused to listen that night, and it took months for confirmation on something so obvious to innocent bystanders. In addition, LAPD found Matrice's bank card inside the same car that was towed was several thousand dollars in her savings. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps the 
Malibu Lost Hills sheriffs could greatly benefit from an extensive training on how to identify a person in mental health crisis and what steps to take to protect the individual, other inmates, the community, residents, as well as themselves. Clearly, this was not a candidate for arrest or situation that did not need mental health did, did not need mental health team intervention. Right. Since the disappearance of my trees, family and friends have been trying extremely hard to work with some members of law enforcement, but find it quite challenging given the amount of dishonesty and inconsistencies they have encountered since September 16th of 2009. Four months later, we are still encountering untruths and deception. The family requested tapes from the Malibu Lost Hills Sheriff's Department relating to the night of Matrice's arrest. To date, the family are being to, told that the tapes do not exist. The captain of Lost Hill Sheriff's Station received a promotion soon after admitting that he is in possession of the videotapes in question. Not only does he have them, he reported that they are in the top of his desk drawer located in his office. I have made many comments and statements regarding this tragic situation with my only daughter, Matrice, but I end with this. When you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. Maybe this really isn't a cover up or the Malibu Lost Hills Sheriffs are not hiding anything. Yeah, right. I invite all supporters and readers, um, and he wants you to click a link to some more valuable information that he probably has. But what I'm going to do is go through and read some of this article from lamag.com. And this is titled, What Happened to Matrice Richardson? So we already get into the fact that Okay, she's let go of this police station in the middle of the night. So where does my trees go? So we're going to get to the part where they find her. Somebody is talking about her wandering through Malibu in somebody's backyard. Hmm. Do you know a little bit more about that? Why I find this? Uh, what's a little bit more about what? Her wandering through somebody's backyard after well, she left. There's um a retired uh television uh, uh anchor who owns a property that is um. On this myster in this mysterious area, where another um, uh, woman who's a famous producer of um, uh, BDSM uh, porn movies, and allegedly she's a producer of snuff films as well. So, allegedly she wanders from the jail precinct all the way through this canyon basically into the backyard of this uh retired television anchor and so he reports he he i think he calls the sheriff and, and, and makes a report that there's a a black girl that's wandered wandering around his property correct she had an afro that's what he yep there it goes so an hour later at 6 30 a.m lost hills received a call from bill smith a retired ktla reporter who lives in Monte Nido, the bull, I can't say that, bucolic community of horse properties and private hiking trails that lies about six miles west of the station at the bottom of Dark Canyon. Wow. We had a prowler walking around through the backyard here, but we don't know what the situation was, Smith told the dispatcher. He described the trespasser as a slim black woman with Afro hair. Smith recounted how he opened his window and asked the woman if she, if she was okay. So he made contact. She was just right. resting, he explained. When Smith went to another window to get a clearer glimpse of her, the woman was gone. Lost Hill sent a cruiser to the house, but they weren't able to find anyone. Deputies didn't issue a be on the lookout alert for another six and a half hours hours by which time it was too late my trees had vanished 
Hmm. Which would mean she vanished, vanished in daylight. Correct. Which would also mean that the last person that physically saw her or spoke up about it was Bill Smith. And exactly. That is very interesting. And so, early on, early on, I have to say this because um, this case really touched my heart when it first happened. And, you know, and I and I actually contacted the father. Um, and we had we had some exchanges uh, and I was just, you know, investigating and we were really stuck on this Bill Smith for a moment uh, mm -hmm. because, well, I, you know, we'll, there's some things to be questioned about in his past. And I'll say it like that. But I'm not alluding to anything. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying that 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 person, the fact that. He contacted her. He's the last person to see her alive, basically. So in an investigation, why wouldn't you focus on that person? Correct. Correct. You are absolutely right. I'm going to read another snippet here. The sheriff's department waited two days after my treat was released to conduct his first search. Rather than deploy scent dogs from the station to determine whether she'd gotten a ride or walked the six miles to Monte Nito. See, that was very key. That was six miles. Right. From 1238 a.m. She made it all the way over here to this this canyon like place. So, wow. OK, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, <clears throat> six miles to Monte Nito searches. Started at the location last seen, Bill Smith's house. Out front, they found tracks from Matrice's sneakers. It appeared she'd been running, but they lost the pattern among shoe and hoof prints fewer than a hundred feet from Dark Creek. The officers didn't hike into Dark Canyon. Because Matrice was an LA resident, the investigation became the responsibility of the LAPD's missing persons unit. Although the sheriff's department remained heavily involved, three days into the search, the case was reassigned again to the LAPD's robbery homicide division because officials explained that office had better resources. It was not, they assured everyone, a homicide investigation. When the LAPD got a hold of the journals from Matrice's Machi Civic, they concluded that she'd been sleep deprived for several days and could had been suffering from a bipolar episode the night of her arrest. Police also found the ATM card, checkbook, and cell phone in her car. So that's very interesting. She walked all the way to this place. You guys come out there finally after two days after this man then called you and told you that he saw somebody in his backyard. You find sneaker tracks. And then you you don't search a particular area, I guess, because you guys didn't feel like it. Just like you didn't feel like keeping my tree safe in that jail cell for a couple more hours until her mom said she would come get her in the morning. That's that's just beyond crazy. Um, it didn't take long for the press to pick up the story about the strange black woman who'd appeared near sleepy white Malibu. After being in sheriff's custody, her family and friends, as well as others who'd heard about the case, had descended on the area, handing out flyers and pleading for anyone who'd seen her to step forward. Michael and Latisse, who'd been clashing on and off since their breakup some two decades before, looked past their disdain for one another, if only briefly. They wanted their daughter back and they wanted answers. How could deputies let a woman loose in the middle of the night in a remote area? with nothing but her driver's license? Why didn't they take her unusual behavior seriously? Why does Mel Gibson get a ride to his car, but not the black girl from Watts? Mm. On right. September, I mean, that you made that point. She's from Los Angeles. You know, these people clearly were disturbed by her presence at Joffrey's. And then, you know, the way that the sheriff's department carried on the conversation with the mom about not releasing her in the middle of the night, it just seemed like he was whistling Dixie. 
So, you know, that's crazy. Just because Mel Gibson was an actor, prominent, um, he deserved safety over this woman. That's crazy. Uh, on September 20th, 2009, three days after Matrice's disappearance, Lost Hill Station's Lieutenant Scott Chu sent an email to his supervisor, Captain Thomas Martin, concerning the arrest and release of Matrice. A well-placed source provided me the contents of the email in which Chu says the arresting deputy, Luriero, booked Matrice because he wanted to make sure she was all right. She was a little ditzy at Jeffrey's and a deputy checked her for intoxication. She wasn't drunk, but Luriero felt she was acting unusual and was uneasy about letting her go, Chu noted. In the end, Luriero brought her because of his instincts. The fact that she disappeared validated his instinct. Yet Chu concluded the email by rationalizing the missteps that led to Matrice's disappearance. At the station, it became obvious that she was well-educated and intelligent, he wrote. So there was nothing to justify keeping her overnight. So even within the the sheriff's department, people are starting to poke their heads out the woodworks and they see that there is a clear mistake that right. took place. Yeah. Like Chu was like, yeah, let me let me reprimand you a little bit, but let me back off too at the same time. I gotta keep my job and my benefits. You know, really that the 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 thing that you read that the father said, you know, alludes to that once they got her in the custody, they should have given her a 72 hour mental evaluation. That is true. That is true. I mean, the lack of any type of, if I were to discriminate against somebody because they were mentally handicapped, I would be chastised to the highest degree. So why can't, this police department be the chastised as well and and put through training hopefully they've gotten the proper training after 10 years but it's too late now in the meantime sheriff's department and lapd personnel chased false leads from beverly hills to chino hills hoping to gain some insight into my behavior at the station the family tried to acquire the jail cell video from the night of the arrest. To their surprise, Captain Martin told them it didn't exist. There is no video or, or tape of any kind, he was quoted as saying in the Malibu Surfside News. But on January 6, 2010, when Latisse's aunt, Lauren, and two friends sat down with Martin and Sheriff Baca at LASD headquarters in Monterey Park, Martin confessed that there was indeed a video. It was in his desk drawer. By the end of the month, Martin, a 34-year-old LASD veteran who lived minutes from the station he'd led for six years, was promoted to commander and transferred to Monterey Park more than an hour away. He was replaced by Captain Joseph Stephen, the first African-American to run the Lost Hills facility. So <laughs> I just want to say that was just a big Band-Aid over everybody. So y'all can feel right. like Okay. And, and that I told you, like I was saying before, you know, we went on live. Uh, mm -hmm. My Teresa's case, in my opinion, was the the um, you know the uh, huh the Sandra well, Bland before his time. Yeah, it was Sandra Bland before his time, and also it was the tipping scale for. The mm. department from for that particular department, that particular pre, uh, precinct, because um, this put the heat on uh, former L.A. County Sheriff Lee Baca, mm -hmm. which, you know, he's serving prison right now. Um, and I think this is one amongst other cases. Uh, but I think this was the case that kind of shined the light on, on that there's something going on in this mm -hmm. department mm -hmm. because clearly you know the family was not able to see this recording and then all of a sudden you pop back up with it 
So let me read this real quick. Three months would pass before Matrice's family was allowed to view the footage at LASD headquarters. The department attributed the delay to technical difficulties. Latisse says her daughter appeared agitated and distressed. However, the video had been edited, leaving the family to wonder what had been cut out. For instance, one moment, Matrice is holding a piece of paper, according to those permitted to see the tape, and the next, the paper appears to be on the floor crumpled. Why won't they show us how the piece of paper got that way, asked Latisse. When they withhold information, it causes suspicion. Did they cut important footage? Though the sheriff's department may simply have condensed the video for an outside audience, it refuses to clarify why the video was truncated and has not provided the unedited version. So it was also stated by Rhonda, the clinical psychologist that, you know, was by my Teresa side um, in her adulthood up until her untimely demise. She described um, that the family was not able to really, they weren't able to have possession of the video. They only got to see it one time at this headquarters at this office. So basically what they ended up having to do was write down minute for minute what they saw. Okay. And then on top of that, they tried to, uh, in the lawsuit that occurred after the fact, they tried to get a copy for the lawyer when the lawyer tried to get a copy. He said he got the copy and the copy was so grainy that he couldn't make out none of the stuff that the family had made out in the video they were showing at the police department. Haven't we heard that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 wicked. So let me get to the part where we're, you know, we're finding her. This is a very well written article. So the Rangers found the corpse shortly past 12 o'clock on a warm day in August of 2010. They were deep in Dark Canyon. Y'all remember that that name over there by Bill Smith's house? On the 818 side of the Santa Monica Mountains, inspecting a marijuana farm that had allegedly been run by a Mexican cartel. So they could search it for a marijuana farm, but they couldn't search it when they had a report of a, a missing mentally challenged woman wandering around that area as well. I, I, I just can't. I can't. They were familiar with the farm just over a year earlier. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department had flown over Dark Canyon, spotted the grow, along with a pair of others in the Malibu region. Swaths of ganja that had been planted in spring and left to mature until the late summer harvest. After the flower the farms were raided. As expected, the growers were absent and a thousand plants were uprooted in Dark Canyon alone. Dark Canyon is a sensible place for a pot farm. Located near Calabasas, it's less than eight miles from the 101 freeway, yet it's rugged and seldom traveled. Hemmed in by private and federal land, it begins at the top of Puma Road and descends from the south to the north with a boulder-strewn creek. Dark Creek, running the length of the lush canyon bottom. Besides a blip of Santa Monica Mountain's backbone trail that crosses the lower part of the drainage, there are no official footpaths. In the wet season, poison oak is unavoidable. Year-round, the narrow canyon floor is rife and live oaks and scratchy laurel sumacs. You don't stroll along Dark Creek. You negotiate it, hoping climbing Hopping, climbing, concentrating. On this summer day, the rangers were making sure the pot operation had remained defunct. Some equipment was lying around hundreds of feet of garden hoses that once siphoned creek water into begotted PBC lines. But the cannabis was gone. Satisfied that the growers hadn't replanted, the rangers headed downstream. Negotiating a series of boulders, they detoured through a wide clearing about 60 feet upslope from the creek bed. They, then they noticed the skull and beneath the leaf 
debris and dirt, a semi-decomposed naked body. So they find my trees. Right. Um, that is very interesting. If you could hear the way that this place is structured, it is really no way that she got up there by herself. Really, really, really. Like, if there was a way, we would try to make it a way, but there really isn't. They went up there on helicopter. Isn't that right, Cisco? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well, there's, there's a part um, I think you should read. Um, or if you, if you have, uh, it's the part where there's a person where there's a sheriff, a deputy sheriff seen on the video talking to Mitrice. Correct. Now, yeah. after the video, I don't see that paragraph. That's um um the LS L A S D declined to elaborate. You see that paragraph? Uh-huh. On another detail that was rattling Matrice's family even further. About two minutes after Matrice is seen exiting the station, a deputy goes out an adjacent door. It was shocking, Latisse tells me. For the first time, we learned that someone from L LASD might have seen or even talked to Matisse, Matrice outside the station. We thought it was vital that someone look into it. The department wouldn't reveal the name of the deputy, and this lack of transparency has only fueled the family's distrust. Of course, it makes me suspicious, says Michael, a six-foot-one-inch-tall, 335-pound, self-proclaimed hothead with a tattoo of my treats on his forearm. The guy leaves the building right after my daughter, and they don't tell us anything about him. He could have, had, he could have abducted her, offered a ride to her to the impound lot left her for dead and come back for her maybe he didn't see her the point is why have they been hiding him it's their job to get off their donut eating but and find the truth <laughs> now, that's true yeah and i shouldn't laugh because that's a father's cry out in frustration yeah it is true it is it I mean, I can true. understand because, you know, he's pretty much telling them, like, y'all got to do better than this. So, I mean, I understand, man. A confidential source provided the name of the deputy in the video who'd been transferred less than six months after Matrice's family viewed the footage. Whoa. When I called the deputy, he told me, unfortunately for you, dude, I was there and hung up. On our next call, he insisted that he couldn't remember if he'd been at the station the night of Matrice's what the night my trace was arrested and then went on to imply that he had been on site the night this nonsense happened he said i was one of the guys that kept away from this minding my own business no no why would he even have to say that why That's would you go said. on why unfortunately for you dude i wasn't there but they'll only come back to say that you was there but i was minding my own business minding your own business so what were the other dudes you hiding behind the blue shield or what? Or what? What's going on? What's going on? So then we have another interesting fact that took place. The place where Matrice was found at had some interesting paintings. Right. Very, very sinister. Very, very uh, salacious, scandalous pictures of right. black women in various states. Right. Various, Very, various, various states. erotical, sexual. Erotical, sexual, uh, disturbing states. Um, one and, of them even had. They, happen, they happened to have the Afro. Correct. They all had Afros. That's the and only. The, I mean, God, Lee, this is crazy. So you got to think the about one, it. And the one is smoking smoking weed with the uh, L.A. A joint. Right. <laughs> so then you got to think about it like this. What person put that 
out there that fast. This is a big mural we're talking about, okay, Cisco? Who put that out there that fast that when the police were searching or doing their canvases and hovering over that place, they didn't see that themselves? Not, so to mention by, not, not to mention by now, it's hit the news. It's hit the news. So I'm just going to leave y'all on that note. Um, mm, 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 mm. Rest in peace, my trees. Um, your story has not been forgotten. It will be told for generations and generations to come. And I don't even want to say this, but this is why people don't trust the powers that be. Is there anything that you would like to say closing out, Cisco? Um, just um, when I first heard this case, right when it happened, it touched me so much that I had to reach out to the to the father. And um, um, this case is very uh close to my heart um because when i started to look into my Teresa's life it seemed like she was a promising young black woman just trying to make it and in my research i didn't really know until later that there was you know some issues but regardless of her her mental issues my trees wasn't dealt with fairly from from Godfrey's restaurant to the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Uh, it's just sad and it's, it's not right. And, and this is uh, at least my intentions and, you know, my inspiration for wanting to contribute to this video. And okay. please, you guys, we thank you for the support and like, subscribe and share. That's all I got to say. Thank you so much, you guys. I really do appreciate y'all once again. And we'll be back.